yet. Um, it is a great privilege to be addressing the women of the future. And those famous words, I was the future once. Um, I'm 42 years old. I am, in this company, a woman of the past. But I'm not bitter about it. <laughs> I'm not grumpy about it. Because one of the great things about being um, a human rights campaigner is that you get to work with a lot of young people. And one of the reasons why I do what I do, my campaign for people's fundamental rights and freedoms here at home, not all over the world, but here, here in Britain, is because I feel very, very strongly that our open society is, it doesn't belong to my generation to be squandered. It belongs to your generation just as much as the environment or, or, or any of the other treasures that, that we've enjoyed in our lifetimes. It's not for us to, to squander, it's not for our, us to fritter away. These precious rights and freedoms belong to all of you until you're ready to take them on and protect them hopefully for, for the next generation, for your children and, and those that follow. And of course this evening is supposed to all be about role models and about inspiration. The question in my mind is, who, is who's going to inspire who? Because I have to say that already this evening I've come along and I've had a had a Diet Coke. Now sometimes at these events, when there are people who are all over the 18th, there's something other than Diet Coke. <laughs> but I have to say, I've already enjoyed this evening more than many of the drinks parties that one goes to in middle age life. <laughs> um, now, networking is incredibly important, and all sorts of people uh, spend a lot of time worrying about it. And no doubt, many of the inspiring professional women that you're going to meet this evening have been, you know, and taught all sorts of tips about networking that they're going to pass on to you and hopefully you're going to absorb and doubt their, you know, their, their colleagues over the years have told them about this thing called networking. Now, the first rule of networking is you have to pretend that you're not really doing it. Because <laughs> networking doesn't really exist. So all of these people that you go up to and you plant your business card on are your new best friends. You're not networking at all. So it's got to look incredibly real and sincere, even though you're doing it because you, you, know, because you want to meet people and you, and you want to get on. There are, of course, very, very practical things that arise when you're in a, a room like that one that you just left. Um, you know, the obvious one is, what will I do? Well, I haven't got my chums from, from sixth form with me, and I'm standing there in that deserted carpet, and I'm going to actually have to to go up to somebody and say hello, well that, I agree, is a, is a tricky challenge. Some of us still struggle with it, still struggle with it um, in the years. So, and as the visionary gentleman from Aviva says, we, we all have a human need to feel significant. So the only thing I can really say to you for, for those moments when you are surrounded in a desert of carpet and you don't know how to break the ice is you are significant. And just remember that you have something interesting and important to say to the person that you go up to, and, and generally in life. So that's the, that's the first problem. Easier said than done, but do it. Break the silence, go and say hello to someone, go and introduce yourself. But worse than that, worse than that, is the moment some of the older women in the room are grinning because they know what's coming. The moment if the opposite side of this coin when you are trapped in the corner <laughs> of the room, Miriam is smiling because it happens to her a lot these days, I promise you. You are standing in the corner of the room trapped with the most boring person. <laughs> and they are bending your ear because they want to talk to you. What do you do? What do you do then? I was talking to some, some girls from Wimbledon and we tossed a few ideas around, didn't we? Where are the girls from Wimbledon? They've, they've left. <laughs>
the thing is not to be too obvious and not to be too mercenary about this. We all notice when somebody is talking to us and they're not really talking to us. You know, when they're looking at us but they're really looking over our shoulder in case somebody more important is coming along. And I think we need to temper all of us and our desire to get around the room and meet lots of interesting people with, with, with our own feelings of how it might be how it might feel not to be not to be treated with a sort of kindness and, and politeness or goes around, comes around perhaps. I am so lucky in my work to um, to be essentially a professional teenager. Um, 42 but still a professional teenager, so sort of saying difficult things, sometimes not very popular things to, to, to important to important people. And I have to say to you that sixth form which I think for all of you are right now is probably one of the most important and formative uh, points in my life. I think my values were essentially formed by then. I think I'd learned quite a lot from my parents, from my family, from my friends, from my teachers. I was a pretty well-formed person um, in, in, in sixth form. What, what happened subsequently was, yes, you know, a bit of experience, but, but mostly what happened was encouragement and support. And, and doors opening because kind people saw some some crumb potential in this, and that's what I hope this evening can be for all for all of you. Your teachers are with you here to support that. Pinky is an extraordinary woman because nobody says no to Pinky. <laughs> <laughs> that's the they come and play from being at you know. When they, when they haven't watched the X Factor yet, they do this, which is extraordinary, but because her kindness and her humanity, as well as her incredible networking, shine through. And that's, that's a very, very good role model, to use another cliche, for, for all of you. So, so really my message is that I think that we, the middle-aged and slightly older women in the room, are going to take as much inspiration from you as you might glean a few tips from, from us. And finally, my little motto for all of you is, is really the motto that I try to live my own life by, personally, not professionally, personally, and, and the one that I try and share with my nine-year-old son. And that's that you want to be confident but not cocky. The motto for me is, I am anyone's equal but no one's superior. I hope that's true of all of you as well. Thanks very much.